Extraction is a method to separate compounds based on the relative solubility in two immiscible layers, an organic and an aqueous layer. One problem students often have is differentiating between an extraction and washing. An extraction is pulling the desired compound from one liquid phase to another. On the contrary, washing cleans the desired compound from contaminants. Now let's consider what happens during a washing. In this example, we have a sample which is comprised of a blue compound and a yellow compound. Choose a solvent that has a high solubility with your desired organic product. In regards to selecting solvents, density is not an important basis of selecting a solvent. We will dissolve both in ethyl acetate Make sure the stop clock is closed. Pour in solution to be washed into the funnel. Add washing solvent. Be sure not to exceed three quarters of the solvent's volume. Stopper the funnel securely, hold the funnel. With the index finger, hold the stopper in place. Shake vigorously five or six times with frequent venting to prevent pressure buildup. Be sure not to point the funnel towards anyone. Finally, place the funnel back on the ring stand, remove the stopper to allow the layers to separate. As you can see, there are two distinct layers, and in this case we have an organic and an aqueous layer. To determine the composition of each layer, compare the densities of the solvent used in this case, we are demonstrating a washing step, and therefore we started with the organic layer and then added a solvent to remove something from the organic that we don't want, like this blue compound. If this was an extraction, we would have started the same way with the ethyl acetate solution, and then in adding the second solvent, we would keep that resulting solution, since we may want to keep the blue compound. With labeling flasks, Drain the bottom layer through the stopcock the best you can to try and separate the layers, and then repeat the washing two more times with fresh solvent. Collect the same solvents together. You get better separation by doing multiple small volumes than one large volume for washings and extraction. It is important to note that you should never throw away either of the layers until you're certain that you have successfully isolated the appropriate compound. To verify the identification of the layers, you can perform a water drop test. Using a dropper, add a few drops of water to the funnel and observe which layer the droplets mix into. As expected, the heavier layer is on the bottom, leaving this as our aqueous. In this case, this is our organic layer. Once you have successfully isolated your organic layer in an extraction or washing, it is important to remove any excess water contamination. This is a process known as drying. The water is crudely removed by washing with brine, a solution saturated with sodium chloride.
Now we can proceed to the re refined drying stages. There are several drying agents that can be used. Consult the blue section of your lab manual for the appropriate drying agents regarding your desired compound. Drying agents can absorb water from air, and therefore as soon as you've collected the drying agent you need from the bottle, it's essential that you cap the bottle immediately to minimize the amount of water that's absorbed by the drying agent. Add the drying agent in, in small increments at a time. The drying process is complete when the drying agent no longer clumps. There are two precautions one needs. One, be careful not to add too much drying agent since it may absorb all of the organic solution. And two, some drying agents need a couple of minutes before they can fully absorb the water. So get into the habit of adding the drying agent, stirring, and waiting a couple of minutes before assessing the dryness. After you have removed the solution from the drying agent, which may involve decanting or gravity filtration, typically the next step is to remove the solvent by distillation or using the Rovap. When students learn to perform an extraction, I mentioned that it's better to make multiple small volume extractions than one large volume extraction. Compounds have different solubilities and different solvents. So under a biphasic environment, an equilibrium can be established where a compound can exist in both phases. The numerical term to describe this equilibrium is the distribution coefficient or partition coefficient, KD. KD is a ratio of a compound's solubility in extractant divided by the solubility in source solution. It will be a unitless quantity in this case. This example with A, solvent 2 is the extractant and solvent 1 is the source solution. When KD is less than 1, most of the compound is in the source solution. When KD is equal to 1, then there's equal distribution. And finally, when KD is larger than 1, then the compound prefers the extractant layer, which is the solvent that's being added to extract the compound. As an example, the distribution coefficient of caffeine and dichloromethane to water is 4.6. So as, as an example, with a total of 5.6 grams of caffeine distributed in 100 milliliters of dichloromethane and 100 milliliters of water, I expect to find 4.6 grams of caffeine in the dichloromethane and one gram of caffeine in water. Therefore, in selecting a solvent for an extraction, choose one that will adequately separate from the source solution. So choosing ethanol as an extractant to extract from water would not be a good idea, and will also have high affinity for the compound of interest. Now back to the question of why more frequent small volume extractions is better than one large volume. Let's use an example of 100 milligrams of caffeine dissolved in 100 milliliters water and we plan to extract with dichloromethane since we know the partition coefficient. We'll look at the calculations using one 90 milliliter dichloromethane aliquot and three 30 milliliter dichloromethane aliquots. Here's a look at the math. In scenario A, starting with 100 milligrams caffeine and 100 milliliters of water, then 90 milliliters of dichloromethane is added, some amount of caffeine, X, will end up in that layer while the aqueous layer will lose that amount, therefore 100 minus x. Solving for x, we get 80.5 milligrams. Therefore, in the dichloromethane layer, we have 80.5 milligrams of caffeine, while 19.5 milligrams of caffeine remains in the aqueous layer. Now, in contrast, what happens when we use more frequent small volumes of dichloromethane? So in the first extraction, in setting up the equation, just like in the first example, we pull out 57.9 milligrams of caffeine in the organic layer, and 42.1 milligrams remains in the aqueous layer. Then on the second extraction, we have to remember that 42.1 milligrams of caffeine remains in the aqueous layer, so we need to use 42.1 minus x and not 100 minus x. In working out the math, we pull out 24.4 milligrams and leave behind 17.7 milligrams in the aqueous layer. Finally, in the third extraction, we remove 10.3 milligrams and leave behind 7.4 milligrams in the aqueous layer. So when all three dichloromethane extractions are combined, a total of 92.6 milligrams of caffeine is extracted. Compare that to the 80.5 milligrams in the one large aliquot extraction. 
So I hope I've convinced you why more frequent smaller volumes is better than one large volume. To summarize this video, you have watched a demonstration of how a washing and extraction is done, and you should know the difference between the two techniques. Keep in mind that they have the same procedure, and the main difference is in which layer you keep. In washing, you add an immiscible solvent to a solution to remove contaminants from that solution, while in extraction, you add another immiscible solvent to remove a compound of interest. We also emphasize that after an extraction, the, the organic layer, which inevitably have residual water, and therefore you may need to dry the organic layer crudely with saturated sodium chloride solution, and then secondly with a drying agent. Finally, we mathematically showed how washing or extraction with small volumes is better than one large volume.